Amen. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we exalt you. We magnify your holy name. We see that there is none like you. Our joy is truly directly from you, O Lord Jehovah, King of glory. We thank you, Spirit of the living God, as you continue to teach us, as you continue to grow us, as you continue to raise us up in your ways, O God. We worship you. We magnify your holy name. Lord God, as we have this session, may you minister to your children in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Lord Jehovah God, today I am reminded so heavily of how, what a heavy price you have paid for your church, O oh God. May you encourage us, O oh God, to walk in paths of righteousness, O oh Lord Jehovah God. May you direct our path, O oh Lord Jehovah God, even according to your word. And may we be sensitive to listen to you, O oh God. We love you. We magnify your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Sorry. Give me just a sec to ask guys. Guys, I'm doing a live video, please. Thank you. All right, so guys, um, Yanni, me, I'm feeling cold, eh? like super, super cold. The only reason why I'm not wearing like, um, you know, uh, jackets and stuff is just because I was found outside uh, without <laughs> whatever, but it's so cold. But then I love this weather, by the way. It's my favorite kind of weather. It's just really nice when, you know, um, I'm warm. So um, one of, uh, uh, where do I start Spirit of the Living God? Um... I have a habit and if you know me you will know that i have this habit and the habit is to ask people where do you fellowship you know whenever someone tells me stuff da, 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 i'll always ask them where do you fellowship and i found that there's um there's an answer most of the time in where somebody fellowships today um you know we've been transitioning our two youngest children uh from eight for four i i just reached that place i said no you know what, I'm patriotic and everything. I know they've changed the system and all that, but man, the damage on our third born, you know, because I know the calling of God on her life. So I've been protecting her and shielding her, and I've been very, very conscious when you know your child has a calling and um, there's a way that the Lord wants to use them, then you learn also to protect them. So I, I could see that um, this thing for Foster wasn't working, it was silencing her. She's a prophet, you know, and a worshiper, and I could see her completely being squashed, you know. So we've been doing some school hunts. I, I'll do another video about uh, education systems and about school hunts because I think there's so much that I've learned in the process of that school hunt. So today we ended up in a very small school. And as I was walking around, you know, just depending on the Holy Spirit to tell me whether this is the place or not, I found myself, um, you know, just saying to a friend of mine, this works for me because it's small, you know, and I was telling her, I prefer small things. I prefer small churches. I've always preferred, you know, um, uh, smaller groups. I've always preferred, you know, uh, smaller schools and everything, even though they're coming from a really, really big school. I like the smallness. And later on, part of the confirmation I got from my children was, ah, so in that school, we have to finish, um, you know, our, our food. But in our school, we don't have to finish our food. We can leave it. And let me tell you, if I was looking for a confirmation, I was like, Yes, that place where they make the children finish their food, that place where they make sure that the child has actually eaten, that's the place that I want. Now, what is the relationship between this and, and our work with God? You know, every, let me say about 98% of the time, probably a higher figure, like 90, 99% of the time. Whenever I talk to someone who has funny doctrine, funny things are happening to them, funny things are going on, their marriage is on the rocks, you know, um, you know, cases where not necessarily one person, but a marriage on the rocks, you know, and, and, and very often I can't help but ask, Haya, Kwani, where's your pastor? You know, why, why are you calling me? Why are you talking to me? Why are you contacting me? Where is your pastor? And, um, I don't know. And, 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 and in a sense, I think for the longest time, I was very afraid, by the way. You know, when we started Sozo Church in 2013, I was so scared when we started growing phenomenally. And I remember praying to God and saying, God, I'm very uncomfortable with this growth. You know, I, was, I guess I was a bit naive, but then I was working uh, with a young family and people who were growing so fast and I was feeling so overwhelmed. And my fear was always, what if we grow so big that I can't take care of the sheep? And that's something that we need to be concerned about. We are called by the Lord to take care of the sheep. We are called by the Lord to give a personal touch to the sheep. We are called by the Lord to make sure that each person who comes our direction, we know that we'll have to give an account to God. So I talk to people and, you know, so two things I'll normally ask. If you tell me something that's a bit weird, um, you know, something that points to a doctrinal lack of understanding, lack of knowledge, I'll normally ask two things. One, 
when did you get born again? Because sometimes maybe you're dealing with a baby Christian. But very often I'll find someone has been born again 10 years, 15 years, even 5 years, 10 years. You know, 10 years, 20 years. And the person is asking you a basic question. Recently I had a very basic question. I'm not sure the person would mind me saying so long as I'm, of course, not disclosing who it is. But I had a very interesting basic question. Somebody asked me um, through my inbox, Apostle, uh, my sister is having a problem with demons. Is it okay for them to go and see a sheikh? Because I've been told that there's a sheikh. Sheikh, yes, you had me right. Sheikh, as in um, somebody who, uh, a sheikh, an imam or something anyway. One of those, eh? But not a Christian uh, leader. Uh, 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 somebody from one of the other religions. So they were going to meet them so that they can cast out demons. And you know, by the way, guys, there are questions I get and I look at my inbox and I start thinking, you know, I have moments when, by the way, I look and I start crying for the sheep. And I'm like, Lord, what's going on? What's going on? Then, of course, sometimes I meet some pastors and I'm watching and I'm thinking, how did you end up being a pastor? You know, because it's a preparation process. And you know, we are all inadequate, by the way. We are all inadequate. We are all fallen. We are all working out our salvation. But there are some pastors who have not even gotten past their own inadequacies, past their own inefficiencies. And by the way, that's why I keep talking about social sessions. I bless God that when I prayed and I asked God, you know, why is it that in 1997, I, I wasn't able to stand, even though you had anointed me so heavily, I'm not sure I've ever, I've ever reached that kind of anointing. Why was I not able to stand? You know, in 2012 now, when, the, when I answered the call of God on my life, I said, God, what was it? And the Lord told me, you're a mess. Outrightly, you're a mess. And he told me, I do not send wounded soldiers to battle. And that's how the Lord, you know, God is so faithful and so kind that somehow he organized and ensured that there was a social session in that year as I prayed. And the Lord also led me in ways of standing and to know how do you stand as a man of God, as a woman of God? How do you stand? If people are depending on you, if people are, you become a well that people can come and drink from, then you have to drink from the Lord God. You have to uh, be a well of Jacob, you know, where the Samaritan woman could come and drink from. And yet, you know, the springs are coming from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So, first of all, the first issue is we have sick shepherds. You heard me right. We have sick shepherds. We have sick shepherds. We have undelivered shepherds. That is a problem we are having. And not just in Kenya. By the way, Kenya is doing way better than a lot of places. Africa is, uh, you know, in, in Africa, Kenya is pretty much leading by the way the Lord is an anointing that the Lord has sent our way. We are blessed. But man, when you get to a place where in an American church, you have a man of God putting on a Wakanda suit, you know, that Wakanda leader suit, and then being put on a platform and women are standing next to him with spears. And the, I bet these women are, are, you're not supposed to bet, but man, I, I can, I can, I don't know what, what spiritual word I would use, but I'm pretty certain that these women are intercessors. There must be intercessors, intercessors or worshippers, you know, putting on everything as in someone took time to go and, 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 and get measurements for our Kanda suit, find someone wasted, wasted church resources and sent and, 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 and paid for our Kanda suit and Wakanda outfits. I, oh. Guys, we have much praying to do. We have much praying to do. And the kind of praying I'm talking about is the way we are fasting and praying. And we are not just fasting and praying for our church where we are. We must pray for the body of Christ. We must pray for the sheep. We must pray for the shepherds. Guys, we need to pray. Things are thick. Satan is not just walking around like a roaring lion. He's actually snatching up people. He's actually taking away people. That Jesus has paid a price for. That Jesus has, has paid oh, with his life, guys. May we get a burden to pray. May we get a burden to pray. May we pray as, as, as shepherds we ourselves. If you're a man of God or woman of God, don't pray just for your church. We are not in competition. There are not enough. Let me tell you, there are not enough churches to take on the entire harvest. There are not enough churches, so we are not in competition. There is more than enough lost sheep. There is more than enough fallen people. There is more than enough people in the wrong places. Following wolves in shepherd's clothing. 
which is a bigger issue that has come across now. You know, it used to be a wolf in sheep's skin that was the biggest issue. But the biggest issue that the flock is facing right now is shepherds, wolves in shepherds' clothing. That's an even bigger issue. Oh, I tell you, my heart is so grieved. Today I've just been crying to the Lord as we've been fasting corporately, crying for the church, crying for the sheep, crying for the nation. You know the problem that we're having with our nations is a fallen church. Because if the, the, the church cannot lead, if the people of God cannot lead, if the, 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 the saints of God cannot stand where they are at themselves, then where are we at? You know, today as I was driving along um, uh, along the road, I needed to, to 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 call a sister of ours who's unwell, and um, you know my my Bluetooth whatever was not working, so I just put hands free. You know, I put I put it on speakerphone, and as I was driving through, um, you know, this cop saw me, you know, in a picky picky, and I was like, oh God, I hope I'm not in trouble. But I continued with the phone call. I needed to encourage this sister, and I was just letting her know how much we love her, and we're gonna stand with her if we need to do shopping for her house we're gonna do shopping for her house she's not gonna be a trouble to other people because the lord was warning me that she'll begin to feel like people don't love her like there are no people who surround her and who is her family her family is the family of christ so like okay so six weeks to seven weeks or so we are in the church we will surround you we will walk with you we'll stand with you i've been teaching on love and the lord was like this is practical love you go do shopping arrange for people to deliver the shopping arrange for people to whatever because she's broken her leg how is she gonna get around she has a cow right she's also experiencing quite quite a bit of expenses she did not expect. So who's going to love on her? I say this also just to share with you because I know some men and women of God will watch this. And guys, we have to go back to practical love. We have to protect the sheep by loving them, by surrounding um, them with love, by teaching in the church about practical love and standing with one another. Of course, there are people who always try to take advantage as a result of all that. So we just need also to be very intuitive and also very um, able to listen. Discerning is the really word, you know, to, to be able to know this one is trying to take advantage and we don't try to take advantage, we take care of the sheep. So anyway, I, I really needed to make this call. So I made the call, yeah. So as we are talking, you know, I don't even know where this cop crawled from because I was looking on my mirrors and everything. I'm not on the phone like this. I'm on the phone hands-free and I'm like, surely I'm driving, I'm concentrating, I'm not going too far. So the cop comes and overlaps me and says, see me ahead. And I'm like, Lord, I've done nothing wrong, you know? And I told the cop, I'm indicating on this side. So I'm telling him, no, you come this way. <laughs> And then I got to the gate of where I was going and I hooted at the cop. That one of, I'm not avoiding you. You come here. There was no place to stop on the other side and I'm getting in here. So whatever deal you need to do. So the guy comes around, you know, and I'm on the phone and I said, honey, we'll talk again, you know, and, and you know, I hung up. Then, um, you know, the cop comes and says, why are you talking on the phone with your, with your whatever, with your, um, uh, with uh, when you're driving? I said, well, I'm on hands free. There's no problem. Then the cop says, well, there's a problem because only Bluetooth is allowed. And the Holy Spirit tells me what rubbish. So I turn and I say, no, Bluetooth is very much the same as speakerphone. Both my hands were on the steering. You saw it. I've done nothing wrong. So the guy's like, no, you've done something wrong, but you learn, you need to change that and all that. And you'll get into a lot of trouble in future. I said, no, I'm not getting into any trouble. I am doing the right thing. My hands are on the steering wheel and uh, I am speaking on the phone and I was coming here from there. And therefore, you know, I have done nothing wrong. So the guy looked at me and said, that's fine. Don't ever do it again. You're forgiven. I said, I thank you. Thank you, Bana officer. Uh, thank you for forgiving me. However, I did no wrong. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'm pushing it. But the Holy Spirit kept telling me I must emphasize it. So the guy looks at me, slows down, puts on his gloves, looks like he's those ones of, oh, give me something for forgiving you. And I looked at him and I hooted again at the gate, you know, and they came and they opened and said, have a good day, one officer. I'm going in here, you know, <laughs> so I got in. But then what am I getting at, guys? Confidence in knowing you're doing no wrong. Um, Confidence in, in, in being able to stand up to, to someone who's trying to bully you, to someone who's trying to take advantage of his superior position. Um, you know, but also, what am I saying? Believers need to stand up. As we are praying for the nation, the problem with the nation, not just a nation, but every nation, is the fallenness of the church. Okay? The fallenness of the church. Number one, follow the law. 
Number two, when you follow the law and someone tries to challenge you, you're ready to pay whatever price it is. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I'm right, guys. I'm just using an example of when the saints take their position, of when the saints stand up, of when the saints know that I am right in the Lord and I'm ready to pay whatever price. We refuse to bribe. We refuse to compromise. We refuse to be afraid. We refuse to be shaken. Okay, so we really need to pray for the church of Jesus Christ. The next thing I'm going to just say is, where you go to church is going to influence your growth. Fact. A number of people love to go to the big churches because they disappear all over the place and all that. However, like my children who've been going to a big school where the teachers do not make sure that they have to do their eating because there are many children... Are you then going to a place where there's no one keeping you accountable? Where you can disappear in a crowd? The other day I had a very refreshing time with a guy in our church. He told me, you know, I went to this church, but it's a big church. And I realized it doesn't matter whether I'm there or not. Nobody will notice. And I realized here, I got saved in December, but I'm not going to grow. So I've been following you online and therefore I decided, let me come here. And I thank God at least the last, you know, two months I've been in this church. I feel loved. I feel appreciated. I feel held into account. You know that church that you're going to, where you're going to disappear, where nobody's holding you into account, unless by the way you're in ministry, yeah? If you're going to go to a big church, please join ministry. But then again, if you've just gotten saved, for us by the way at Sozo Church, we say you cannot join ministry if you've not been a, a believer for at least two years. Why? Because you're going to fall. You're going to fall. Ministry comes with attacks. Who I tell you each. Yeah. Ministry comes with attacks. I learned that the hard way, by the way. A man gave his life to Christ, dedicated his life to Christ last year. Came very close to committing suicide. Actually met us at, our, at the retreat and said, this was the last church I was going to go to before I give up completely on God and maybe even commit suicide. And I decided, let me come to this church. And if God is not there, I'm tired of church hopping. I'm tired of looking for places where God is. I'll give up and say there is no God or whatever it is and commit suicide as well. So this guy just rededicated his life to Christ. And then, oh, the guy is so helpful. You know, these church members, people who come to church and then they see in a small church, oh, this issue needs help. And the guy is committed. Yeah, you guys, there are some people who are just awesome and so sweet and they dedicate themselves completely. Now, our church has intercessors. You know, someone was, was, was laughing the other day and telling me, eh, hey, no, me, I'm not, I'm not coming to your church to minister. If I come and preach at your church, I see people will just be looking at me and they're like, I know what you did yesterday. You know, it was, it was hilarious, but that's a fact. So somebody comes to me and tells me, uh, 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 Apostle, I feel so and so should not be serving. They need to sit and grow and learn. And this was one of my biggest mistakes, you know. I, 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 you know, the person was so helpful. I'm like, if he leaves, who, who will, whatever. And let me tell you sooner or later, the enemy had hit the person. The enemy had attacked the person. So now we're in a process of remedial action, healing, you know, getting over it and all that. If only I listened to our dear intercessor, you know. And now, I mean, I'm learning. Come on, just go ahead and listen. The soul is more important than the service, than the, what the person is doing. But anyway, what was I saying? Ministry, you need to grow so that you can be able to minister. Otherwise, you will fall. Otherwise, you will, you will move the other way, you know. And when when you are being fed in that time, but then you know salvation is just like having a baby, right? First of all, you pray. And what happens is that, you know, prayer for souls is like pregnancy. So you're interceding and you're crying for souls. And it's pregnancy. It's a seed that the Lord has put in your heart. And then from there now you move into when the souls actually come, it's like birth. So you take these little children and the Bible talks about spiritual milk. So you feed them with spiritual milk, you nurture them, you walk with them, you, you, you get them uh, walking with somebody, not necessarily walking with just one person. I personally don't even have the time to necessarily walk with people, but what I do is that I get people around me who I've mentored, I've worked with, and they in turn move around and walk with those other people. So everybody takes care of another person, so long as you've been born again at least for a year or so. And even if you've been born again for six months, you can walk around with somebody who has been born again for just a month, has just given their life to Christ, but we mentor one one another that's how we walk uh with the saints of god so um you know so that if, if if you don't have that kind of a model in your church if that's not working if that's not you know souls are not so important uh and no the church has moved to numbers and moved to i don't know what else our big churches do maybe i'll know one day when we're a big church us guys are just about on a good day we are just about 140 people you know um so if 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 if, if your 
the church that you go to is so big that you're insignificant. Nobody, but they know the interesting thing is last week I started making phone calls and uh, I was calling people I've not seen for some time and they were shocked and they're like, I've been born again for 10 years. A pastor has never called me. I've been born again for 15 years. No pastor has ever called me. I've been born again for five years. No pastor has ever called me. And they were shocked. And I began to think, hmm. And then I thought about it. And I said, oh, well, wait a minute. No pastor has ever called me, by the way. Then I went back to, okay, I got saved in a time when there were no phones. At least there was, there was a pastor who came to visit me, you know, and check on me and everything when I was in ministry. So I was like, okay, few, but once, you know. And then you look at it again. Then another pastor again, I think, visited me once again. But really, I've been born again 26 years. Visited by a pastor, one pastor once, once, you know. So it's actually an issue. It's an issue. It's an issue. But also, you know, um, and, and thank you, Calvin, for saying, yes, the quality of the word yeah, determines the quality of the people. Absolutely. I like that point. Yeah. So there are two things. Number one, big churches, a number of, quite a number of big churches, and that have been around for a long time, will have quite a bit of quality. Okay? They'll have quite a bit of quality. However, what about the follow-up? What about the follow-up? So the other thing is, where you go to church, you know, we might say, we will say a newer church, you know, or a younger church or a church with smaller numbers will have, you know, you will stand more and you'll grow more. But still again, I want to go back to where did this person grow up? Oh, the intercessors are here already. We have a ministry meeting. Where did this person grow up? Where did you go to church? Where did you grow up in? When you ask your pastor that kind of question, you are able to tell. You know, I remember meeting uh, this couple and I was talking to the man and by that time they hadn't joined our church. And then he said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up under Dennis White. I'm like, whoa. Then he goes up and says, I grew up. I, and then later on, I moved and I was with Das. And, you know, straight up, you know very well this person is so founded in the word of God, strong in the word of God, because these are the fathers of faith previously in the past. Whether they have moved away or not, but in those days, if you went to, 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 to Nairobi Pentecostal Church, if you went to Nairobi Pentecostal Church in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, oh, you were founded. If you went to Nairobi Lighthouse Church in the 90s, you were founded in Christ. If you went to places like Crisco, and by the way, Crisco is still very, very strong, still follows up the, 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 the faith of God. I'm not going to talk about other places. I'm talking about Crisco right now. They are still very, very founded on what um, Harry Das, Apostle Harry Das, uh, came up with. So you will grow. There's a way you will move. There's a way that, 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 that they followed and a model that they followed. And we bless God for that. And those are the things we're trying to go back to because the churches have moved away from the model of the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. And it worked. The church model of the year 2000 and coming closer flopped because it moved into secularism. It moved into trying to get money. It moved into, if you tithe, I'll follow you up. If you don't tithe, I'm not following you up. But how about the soul? How about growing people? How about moving with people and growing with them? I still believe in the mentorship model. I still believe, or uh, at Sozo Church, by the way, what we do, and this may help another pastor because it took me time to be able to know, what do I do, what do I do? Because you can be stretched so thin. So what I do is that I have a core group, the ministry group, and those I mentor and work with very, very closely. I'm actually currently taking them through foundations because I realize quite a number of them are new. A number of them are having quite a number of gaps. So when I talk about things and assume that you know, I'm realizing they don't necessarily know. So we started a model, you know, of, of, of working with them, of growing them. And then what we are doing is that now we have cell groups. And then the cell group leaders, I'm working closely with them. I'm mentoring them. We model the first cell group. Then from there, I expect them to model whatever they are being taught. And it's a model of Jesus Christ. He walked with 12, you know, he had more disciples at some point, but really he walked with 12 and then at some point he was walking with two, three sometimes, and even just one sometimes, you know, and there's a way he poured himself out. So by the way, when you reach out to me and you're expecting me to walk with you, journey with you, unless you're coming to Sozo Church, I have said this before, I will not. I will not. Why? I will spread myself thin and I will fail to minister to the, the ones that God has given me. So you want to be mentored by me? You come. We grow together. We move together. We walk together. You know, another thing that some people do eh, is a thing of, you want to reach out to me. Like the other day I had somebody who wanted me to join them and their spouse with holy matrimony. But I don't know you. How am I going to unite you in holy matrimony? I don't even know if you're walking right with God. I don't know who you are. I don't know why you're not depending on your church to take you through. Really? I say, you know what? I will walk with those that come. 
I'm not going to be able to work with everybody. I'm, and I know you guys want to say you're in the online church and all that. If you're out of the country, that is different. If you're in another town, that is different. We'll trust the Lord for a model and how to be able to journey together. But you're in Nairobi. Can you come in? We walk together. We journey together. You will grow. Some people are getting in touch with me. I ask you, where do you go to church? Yani, even the name of the church without me checking is very clear. It's a cult. It's very clear it's a cult. I'm not going to embarrass anyone because I'm not in the, the business of embarrassing anybody and I'm not in the business of judging anybody. But man, man. So then you're in that church. You're dying. You are in a relationship you have no business being in. You are now having a crisis pregnancy. Your children are maybe uh, wanting to commit suicide or doing funny things and all that. You know, by the way, guys, every church has its character. There's a church that will have the character of, 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 you know, the person who's in that church. And by the way, you know, how do I say this, Father? How do I say this, my God, my King? You know, there's a church you will go to and you will find that there's so much sexual sin. And let me tell you, don't assume that it's just so and so and so and so and so and so. If you find that you go to a church and there's a lot of sexual sin even in the, the pastoral team, it means that is a stronghold in your church. And normally it means that the person at the very top is probably cheating on their wife or their husband. And that is what is reflecting. I keep repeating this over and over and over. You go to a church, you find everybody is in lack, 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 everybody, lack, a lot of lack, a lot of lack, a lot of lack, a lot of struggle. There's a season, there's a time, and sometimes the enemy may use it as a weapon. But can you ask the Lord, could it be that at the top, they have not mastered that God is the God of the harvest, that God is a God of plenty, that God is a God of provision, you know? And, and, and you know, what is being taught, guys? What is being taught? What are you eating? When you look at the tabernacle, and when you look at how the tabernacle was set up, the tabernacle is a simple, uh, an old word for the temple. If you look at the temple, if you look at the tabernacle, there's a way that it takes you through. I don't know, there's, there's, a, the, 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 there's you know, the lamp and, and the lampstand, and then there's the showbread and all that. And there's a model for every altar of God. And a key thing is the showbread. And the showbread refers to the word. It refers to the word. In the New Testament now, it refers to the word. If the word is not being taught the right way, if the word is not being taught according to the word of God, if all you're doing is fundraisers, I don't know, all you're doing is talking about money, all you're doing is talking about prosperity, then what happens, and by the way, let me tell you, there's a place for projects, there's a place for the gospel, there's, uh, sorry, there's a place for, for what is it called? Um, there's a place for prosperity because it's part of the gospel. But if that's all you you're hearing you're going to be malnourished it's just a matter of time before you fall into sin it's just a matter of time before your child comes home pregnant it's just a matter of time before your child backslides it's just a matter of time and i tell parents you may go to a church it works for you but beloved what about your children what about your children? For the longest time, I realized my husband wasn't as spiritually mature as I had gotten to. And so when we decided to go to this church that I didn't feel was on fire, that I found that I was struggling with, that I found that very often I would take a walk to the car, I did it more because my husband felt connected. So for the five years that we were there, my husband was connecting, my husband was strong, my husband was walking with God, and I didn't want my marriage to be compromised. Because as women, sometimes we can be able to find find to fellowships here find a place here and all that find you know there's a relationship also we have with the savior and you will grow but if your husband is going to a church where he's not connected where he's not being challenged where he's not sharing with you what what they learned then there's a chance sooner or later that promiscuity will find itself into your marriage so some of you go to churches where your spouse is and by the way again i'll repeat this again if your spouse can go to church and cheat on you, then you're not in a church. You're in a nightclub. And then you can't even go to your pastor to tell them that, oh, you know, my, my nini is doing or happening or this is happening. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. And some of you go to churches where their ears are being tickled. Then you start wondering where your marriage is breaking. Can you go to a church where you're being taught about holiness? Can you go to a church where someone is uncomfortable? 
to show up in church if they are walking in sin. Yes, that church, you know, I've been told, by the way, there's a lady, a friend of mine who told me, uh, my friend Sherry, I used to have a problem with how people would act very uncomfortable around me. I'll be like, what is it? What do I do that makes people uncomfortable? She looked at me and she said, you mean you don't know? So I asked her, what is it? She told me, because when someone is around you, they feel like you can see right through them. I've had women, by the way, leave Sozo because their husbands told them that I make them uncomfortable. And the women leave. And let me tell you, it's not been long. The marriages have broken. They have broken. So what is this that your husband is hiding that he's concerned that I'm looking at them, you know, that I can see? Women don't ask themselves that. You just quickly submit and you go back to that place where your spouse can just cheat on you and do funny things and it's okay. Oh, may the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. And also, how about our children? From a tender age, are they going to a church where they are just taking selfies? Where they are taking their gadgets? Where they're not being taught about the glory of God, the goodness of God, about who God is? Where they're not being challenged in Christ-likeness from a tender age? Where there's no children's church? Where the children's church does not allow the Holy Spirit? What are your children learning? Then you start wondering where your child has gone into depression. Then you start wondering where your child is committing suicide. Then you start wondering where your child is, I don't know, you know, getting involved in, you know, funny, funny things and all sorts of things. Guys, please, Jesus is coming back soon. It's not time to use Sundays as a place of, of friendship. Sundays cannot be a place where you go to this church so that you can look like you're posh. Sundays cannot be a place where you go to this place so that you can feel like you're keeping up with the Joneses. Church is a hospital for the sick. And if you're going to hospital and you're not being healed, if you're going to hospital and you're not being grown, if you're not going to hospital and you're still the same way, having the same issues, having the same struggles, you go to church, you do it, some of you, you decide, oh, you know what? We've been sleeping in on Sundays. Maybe that's why my marriage is breaking. Let me go to church. Then you go to church and the marriage is still not being changed. What kind of church is this that you're going to where your marriage is not being transformed, where there's no change, where there's no outreach, where your children can still continue in the same wayward behavior. There is no transformation. There is no change. I am not saying come to Sozo Church of God. I would love to have you. Yeah. But if the Lord does not send you to us, you'll just be a bother. Okay. So again, you need to be brought by the Lord. You need to be to have a, a spirit that can be changed. By the way, we operate with sonship, where we believe that you need to be able to accept correction. You need to be able to be rebuked. And it's okay because a son can be rebuked. A son can be corrected. A son can be guided. A son can be changed but someone who's not a son is just a visitor and they cannot be corrected they'll take things personally they cannot be guided they cannot be you be told this is not right and by the way as sozo church we meddle we do we meddle we meddle by coming to sozo church you're giving me personal meddling rights so i have meddling rights into your in your life i have meddling rights into your family i have meddling rights into your marriage i have meddling rights of course, I'll not do it in such a forceful manner, but I will get involved because one day I'll stand before the father and he's going to ask me, I sent so and so to you. And what did you do about it? And one thing I believe and I'm trusting the Lord for is that when the Lord Jesus returns, which I believe is pretty soon, when he returns, that social church will be empty. That's what I believe. I've, I kept telling the Lord, Father, and I keep telling the Lord, Father, everyone that you bring to our sanctuary, everyone that you bring to walk with us, oh God, let not even one be lost. My prayer is that everyone will be raptured. And if they are not raptured, God forbid, they'll continue in Sozo phase two of the post-rapture. I don't know where they're going to do it, but anyway, that they have learned enough that Sozo Church will continue post-rapture and they will be the ones telling people, I sinned. And as a result, the other flock was taken and I was left behind and I'm here to teach you the end time news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And may the Lord be with them and may the Lord walk with them. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I have no plan to be left behind saints of God. I have no plan to be left behind. But really, bottom line, guys, you have got to grow. You've got to grow. Going to church is like eating. Actually, it is eating. But what you're doing, you're eating spiritual food. Who are you growing under? What kind of food are you eating? You've got to be able to show growth. You've got to be able to show, I have just come out so so part two uh, you've got to be able to you know last year 
you couldn't stand on your own to pray. This year, you've won two, three souls to Christ. This year, you, you've started like a small ministry where you're working with people, of course, under the guidance of your pastor. Last year, you got born again. This year, you are now starting to be prepared to, to minister. You're starting now to get into your giftings. What is my calling? Where am I at? Do you know, by the way, within two years of being born again, in some places, one year of being born again, depending on the situation, you need to be able able to join ministry. You need to be able to join ministry, whether you're the one who sweeps, whether you're the one who cooks, whether you're the one who carries the mandazis, whether you're the one who says, okay, you know what? I can't preach, but I can give you my house. But you're part of ministry. After at least one year of being fed, even a baby who has eaten for one year walks, isn't it? Otherwise, you're, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. And most of the time it points to the food that you ate. It points to the food that you ate. Let me tell you, Jesus did not have any intention for us to be pew sitters, to be pew, pew warmers. The Lord had no intention of us to be filled with a church where people sit every Sunday. No responsibility, no accountability, nothing. You know, one thing I found that grows somebody so much is to enter into ministry where you grow others, where you work with others, where you shepherd. You know, you just have one person who you're working with, guiding, checking on, confirming they're not in trouble and all that, you know, move with them to the next place and the next place. All right, so let me just check. I'm seeing a question here. Dorothy, Nicole is saying, is it correct to say that particular anointing is not working for you? Hmm. What does that mean, my darling? Oh, I see. So where somebody would be looking at a church and saying, this anointing is not working for me, so you go to another church. I have a big problem with church hopping, by the way. Uh, if the Lord is, if, if, if you say an anointing is not working for you, is the anointing from darkness? What is it? Very often, by the way, some people will leave a church because not because, you know, you, you should be able to leave a church. Oh, let me combine with this preaching. I was going to preach the other day. The Holy Spirit is reminding me. I was going to minister about how to leave a church. So I'm going to combine it here. Why do you leave one? And church really is, is not the right term. Yeah. But what I'm talking about is a building. Okay. So, uh, or uh, uh, a certain body of Christ in particular. Yeah. So we are saying maybe this church, this church, this church, you know, the names that we have, like Sozo Church. Okay. So why would someone leave a particular church? The okay reasons to leave a particular church is one, relocation. Okay. So maybe you're relocating to another place. And I tell people, if you're going to move from one church to another, if you're coming from like, say somebody is leaving Sozo Church and they're moving to say Eldoret or they're moving to Nakuru or whatever, go to your pastor Say, I am interviewing for this job. I am moving to this and this place. Is there someone you can connect me with? Do you know a number of people that fall when they go to another country, when they go to another town, is because they didn't take time to do their homework on where they should fellowship when they're going to that place. When you're relocating, it is critical to find out a church that you can plug into. So at the moment you arrive in that city, the moment you arrive in that country, the moment you arrive in that place, you plug immediately into that church. Okay? It's critical. This story of you move to a place and you stay in an apartment, at your I'm waiting upon the Lord. That's how you will backslide. That's how you finally realize that by this Sunday can be very yummy without going to church. That's how you realize there's an alternative of staying at home. And before you know it, the, the enemy is always walking around prowling, yeah? And he will jump on you and you find yourself in trouble one way or another. And especially for marriages. You might be holding on, but then you'll find out that period when you were suggesting at home. That period you were doing what? One of you was not as strong and they found themselves in a particular situation. And now your marriage is suffering or your children and all that, okay? So one... One reason that could be is situational. So you've moved, you've relocated. Go to your the, your pastor. Uh, maybe if you don't trust your pastor, maybe you, the relocation was an answer to prayer. Or phew, I don't have to stay in this church because things have changed. Then start asking around. Find a man of God that you trust. Find a woman of God that you trust and say, I'm moving to this place. Where do I fellowship in that place? There's a close network of pastors. I can be able to tell you by then, Mombasa, go to this church. In Nakuru, go to this church. In Eldoret, go to this church. Wherever it is, and now I'm starting to know about the international places I'm able to check. Go to this church, go to this church. Because I've worked with the man of God. I've worked with the woman of God. I've listened to them. And I can tell they love the Lord. Okay, So they are following the Lord and they are preaching the real gospel. Times have become tricky. So one issue is relocation. The other issue can be that perhaps 
the church that you're in, the place that you're fellowshipping, they may have started in the spirit, um, but then they've moved into the flesh. Remember the Galatians church. They began in the spirit, but somewhere along the way, you're uncomfortable. Now, if you find that you're uncomfortable about some things in your church, the first thing that the word of God prepare, requires us to do is the Matthew 18. I think it's verse 15 and verse 16 model, where if you realize that someone is sinning, you go to them. So you book an appointment with the pastor, go and meet them. I know you think you're puny, you think you're small, but guess what? You're still a part of the body of Christ and the Lord can use you. I believe by the way the Lord uses everyone in the church and in Sozo Church. I believe in the diversity, but I listen to everybody and I found that God will speak to someone who you'd never even think that God will speak to, including a child. And you'll come that way in a warning. And for me, I've come to learn. I listen, then I enter into prayer and I seek the Lord's face and say, Lord, are you the one who has said? So if even your church does not consider you important, there is a problem right there because it also does not follow the teaching of the body of Christ in the, the unity in diversity and that God will speak to one with a psalm, with a hymn, with a spiritual song. God will give an exhortation to another. The Lord will give an encouragement to someone else. Someone will have the interpretation of tongues. Another one will have the gift of tongues. One will have the gift of dreams. Another one interpretation of dreams. That's how the church works and all for the body of Christ. You can refer to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 for that. And when you're looking at diversity and being used all of us for the body of Christ. So go to the man of God, go to the woman of God, go and meet them and tell them, you know, I feel that, and I've been praying, and of course go and you've prayed, okay? And tell them, previously we were doing this, that, and the other. We we're moving in this way, but lately I feel this and that and the other. That is the uh, Matthew 18, verse 15 and 16 model. If they refuse to listen to you, take another person. Go with another person and go and, and say, we are back to you. We feel that you're not doing the right thing, that this is not... Da, da, da. They might tell you, oh, Kwenda Oko, or whatever it is, now you've become a person who's spreading rumors. They might turn you even into a subject of preaching at the altar. But just stand strong because already it is okay. The Lord is using you. The Lord is going to bless you. At the point that you go two or three people and still the church won't listen, then withdraw to pray. Still go to church, but withdraw to pray. Ask the Lord to speak to you. Ask the Lord, Father, what do I do? In some cases, the Lord will have you stay in that sanctuary and keep pressing in. Sometimes, by the way, it may be that they keep using an example of you. A lot of men and women of God are very scared and very often they will continue to use you as an example. They will hurt you. They will malign you and all that. Stay strong. Pray. Call on the name of Jesus. Do not leave a church until the Lord tells you to leave. Okay? So, with prayer and fasting, the Lord may redeem that church. But finally, if the Lord tells you, no, 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 no. There's a church I had to leave in 2007, and the Lord told me to shake the dust off the feet, my feet. Let me tell you, people said, dying in that church, I hear they're still dying, unfortunately. The other day, someone tried to reach out to me to go and preach in that church. No. I told them, can you go and do some research about who I am? Of course, they never came back to me again. The pastoral team has tried sending me Facebook requests and friends requests and all that stuff. But me, for me, when the Lord speaks to me about a sanctuary, I'm sorry. I'll have nothing to do with you unless you have changed. Of course, if you have turned back to God, if you've gone back to the things of God, I will gladly come towards the healing, the restoration. I'll walk with you. I'll love on you. I'll even give in your sanctuary. But if the Lord tells me, I pray. And the, Lord, the last time I was there was for a funeral. I asked the Lord, has anything changed? Because I was seeing me, I was seeing the sanctuary looked dark. It looked so dark and it wasn't the lighting. So I asked the Lord, has the sanctuary changed? The Lord said, no, nope, the sanctuary has not changed. And I said, okay, let's have the funeral it's my friend's funeral and i finished and i got out and i said oh dear oh dear oh dear and i just i mean I, I haven't prayed for them for a long time i mean but i did pray for many 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 years okay so there will come a time when the lord will remove you and you know what by the way saints of god sometimes the lord's judgment on a sanctuary is protected because of you yes you who thinks you're small, you who thinks you're nothing, you who is being abused, you who is being turned into a sermon, you who is being, your name is being turned around because the pastors are so scared that you're going to confuse people so they, they, you're like a bad apple to them so they have to tell people. And by the way, for a pastor to start telling people, warning people about you, warning people about a child of God or whatever it is, already shows how far away that church has fallen from the things of God. But never leave a church because of offense. Leave a church because the Lord has told you your time is up. The, the Lord has told you, 
um, move so that I can judge this place. And sometimes, but then let me tell you, when you leave that place, judgment will fall. You'll just see it with your own eyes in shock, realizing how our Father loves us. That because of someone who seemed like a nobody or a nothing, that, that place was actually protected. And when you leave, judgment falls. Imagine the Father loves us that way. You know, there's something Franklin Graham said that really touched me. Franklin Graham said, I hope I'm not late. Okay, I'm not late though. I need to get into prayer. Uh, Franklin Graham said that his father was looking forward, Billy Graham was looking forward to entering heaven. Uh, and uh, now he's in heaven. And he said, I have no doubt that my father walked into heaven and heaven received him. And I love this part. He said, my father walked into heaven and was received, not as Billy Graham, but as another child of God. You know, that's a revelation of someone who understands that heaven has no ranks. Heaven has no ranks, by the way. Here on earth, there may be ranks based on anointing, based on paying the price, based on that you've honored the Lord and said, use me, Lord. And by the way, let me tell you, any of you says, use me, Lord, begin to fast, begin to pay the price. The Lord will use you equally and in high ways and in mighty ways. Hakuna wa tu atis, you are born like this and you are born like this and you are born like this. For some people, the calling begins to manifest early. And remember, again, we went, go back to the Gehazis and the, the, the Gehazi kind of approach, yeah? Where just because you're anointed doesn't mean you leave a church, okay? So you can serve under another man of God. You can be the one who is so anointed and people will keep on telling you, you're so anointed. You know, there's a lady who was telling me how she was kept, she keeps being told by people, you're so anointed. How come you're always serving under this woman of God, under this man of God, and then you are so anointed? Go set up your own church. That is the voice of a serpent. That is the same serpent called Lucifer who approached Eve with an apple. You know, one of the biggest mistakes we've made is to think that because I'm anointed, I have to leave a church. You don't leave a church because you're anointed. The Lord asks us that the harvest is ripe. Pray for laborers. And when we pray for laborers, people come. Then the men of God and the women of God mentor you, grow you, walk with you. An anointing begins to show in your life. Let it be used to grow the church. And let the church send you to go and plant. If the Lord calls you out and says, come out and go and plant the church, that is different. Before I left uh, the church where I was fellowshipping, uh, the last church which, which I fellowship was ICC. The Lord spoke to me about raising up women to pray and usher in his last glory. What did the Lord tell me to do? process. So I went to uh, Dina Kitoto and I said to her, the Lord has said this and that to me, but it wasn't in line with what uh, ICC church was planning. So I grieved and I cried and the Lord told me, you follow the right process. Now come out. So I came out and the first thing was, uh, you know, I began to set up uh, Daughters of Elohim and we began to walk together with women and the Lord moved. The Lord moved. I went back to ICC and said, this is what God is doing. Please allow me to set up. Please allow me to do. I'll even go under somebody, but there's something happening. Again, I wasn't allowed. And sadly, the Lord then finally told me, come out now and set up your church. So I, I don't have Sozo Church because I, I, I wanted to. By the let me tell you, I fought planting a church. I fought being a pastor. I was terrified. I knew I was a prophet. But by that time, I didn't even realize I was an apostle. I've learned I'm an apostle along the way as the Lord has ministered to me. Um, you know, I've had people come to me and tell me, mm -mm -mm -mm. you know, and I would wonder, how is it that when I, you give me a, pul a pulpit, um, you know, in an open space, I, I suddenly become an evangelist. I be like, oh my God. Then, you know, you give me a classroom and I will teach and suddenly a teaching gifting manifests. Then you, 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 you send me to a place where I have to take care of sheep and I will take on a very motherly, a very nurturing role. That's a pastoral gift. And I'm like, God, what's happening? What's happening? How come, how come I keep shifting? You know, I'm like, am I a chameleon? Am I a spiritual chameleon? And that's how I learned that apparently apostles, uh, you know, manifest in that way because they operate under the entire fivefold ministry, you know, and the Lord himself also confirmed it to me and said, you're an apostle and an apostle by the way is somebody who has been sent because when the Lord uh, sent me to plant a church, he told me, tell them what I've done for you. I kept asking 52 sermons, 52 sermons or 52 Sundays. Little did I know I'll have to preach more than 52 Sundays, you know, so I was terrified. And I hope that I would be under a pastor. I was hoping that I would just, but they, let me tell you, all I wanted to do was set up a prayer ministry for women. That's all I wanted to do. Just to teach women to pray. To teach women to usher in the Lord's glory. To teach women to love on the Lord. Like the woman with the alabastron, uh, you know, uh, box. To teach, to teach women about who they are in Christ. To, teach, to raise up women. I did not want to be a pastor. So I want to encourage you, if your pastor will embrace your gifting, if your pastor will embrace the anointing on your life, if the pastor will do it, submit your 
yourself to that authority and serve. There's a need for churches to be planted. There's a need for, for, for more pastoral staff. There's a need and let them give you any role. If they'll give you sweeping, that is fine. If they'll give you as you make your way up to whatever it is that the Lord would have you be. Serve and serve indeed. So, um, you know, as I look back anyway, one of the things is, I guess, you know, ICC did not know who I was. I wasn't really, you know, in serving. I wasn't really locked into the, the, the calling. So, I mean, uh, I know Dina and, uh, and Philip Kitoto, they're wonderful people. So they didn't, I know they didn't like, you know, say, you know, no, all, but it was more of who are you? And people were, I need to be careful. And maybe they were busy at the time. So I have nothing. I have nothing. I have nothing. I love ICC Church. So um, the other reason why you need to um, leave a, a sanctuary is like i've said the lord has called you out okay and told you go go and do go and be okay the other reason that the lord may call you out of a sanctuary um would be what lord you are just speaking to me right now about it my father spirit of the living god what was that other thing you were just telling me oh holy spirit Yes, a case of the glory has departed. Ikabod, okay? A case of the glory has departed. When the Lord's glory leaves, ask him, Lord, if your presence is not here, should I also remain here? And find out from the Lord. Very often when there's a case of Ichabod, the Lord will call out his own, you know. And it's important to be able to know Ichabod means the glory has departed, as in the Lord is not allowed, okay. So people have directly decided they are bowing to other altars. They, are, they, are, they have decided that they are not going to, 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 to do what, um, uh, you know, what, what God wants them to do. Some of them will join Illuminati. By the way, there's someone who was telling me once about how uh, an Illuminati approached them, a man of God. An Illuminati approached them and they don't even pima by the way. They don't hide. They tell you, yeah, I mean, Illuminati, we can help you grow your church very quickly. This is what you can do. I've worked with so and so, I've worked with so and so, I've worked with so and so. Have you noticed this church that has grown? And then, you know, that when the person refused, they asked them, Can you think you're the only one? You know, and you know, they were at sour grapes and everything. Can you imagine that's how where things have reached? There are some churches that are being grown by Illuminati powers, and of course, that's powers of darkness. There are churches that are being grown, and you know, the pastor is offered money and told, You know, uh, follow everything we tell you. And so, the gospel that you're finding being preached is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's sounds like it. They'll quote from the Bible. They mention the name of Jesus here and there, but they'll empty the cross of its power. Yeah, Either there'll be a man of God who'll be lifted so high, or you know, the blood of Jesus is not there, or people are being neglected, or whatever it is. I don't know what manner of things they use. But apparently, you are allowed to keep preaching. You can even, and I hear there's a cross apparently that they use, a particular kind of cross. And it's part of what you use, you know. And it looks like the normal cross, but apparently it's been dedicated uh, in terms of Satan and all those things. I'm telling you, they are spooky things. So when you go to the house of God and you're dozing, when you go to the house of God and there's no power, when you go to the house of God and there's nothing, ask the Lord, could it be that the glory of God has departed? There's an Ichabod situation. Am I the one to pray back, you know, a, a cupboard so that the Lord's glory can come back? Or do I leave because the Lord has also left? So um, the process of how to leave a church is you need to go and see the, the, the people, yeah? You need to go and see the people. Tell them, you know, yeah, I feel led that I need to move. Yeah, of course, if it's an Illuminati situation, you need to run for the hills if they become a cult. And you need to ask God to disconnect you. Remember, the process of fellowshipping somewhere means that um, there's a spiritual authority that that person has over you, meaning there is a soul tie, and meaning also there's an authority they have over you. So sometimes people leave churches and then they die. Sometimes people leave churches and then things begin to go south. Everything is, is flopping and all that. And you know there's some churches, and you need to be careful, there's some churches where you're required to kiss the altar and you're required to, I don't know, you keep on being told, be careful about people who tell you, Mombiale uh, tumeomba kwa imadabao. You know, be very careful about such terminologies. Eh? Uh, you know, um, the giving, you know, this altar thanks you for your giving. Be very careful about that. Be very, very careful. Because which altar are you talking about? Because such things bind you to that particular altar. And then you find that maybe when you're leaving, funny things begin to happen to you. You also need to do the soul tie breaker. So it's very good to go to the pastor and go and, oh, there's also a case where the Lord tells you, come from this church, go to another church. So maybe that church has enough 
laborers and the Lord wants you to leave. So like that's how we left Nairobi Lighthouse Church. The Lord said, uh, it's time for you to leave this sanctuary so that you can go into this other sanctuary so that you can be workers. I've got some work for you there. Of course, when we went to Nairobi Lighthouse Church to be released, uh, Pastor Nelson said, I'm not releasing you. I'm not releasing you. We've worked together for so long. I told him, Pastor, I really, really love you. Thank you for working with me for so long. Until now, God can actually send me out. I know you're finding it difficult to release me, but please, I have to go. I have to go. And the other day when I met um, uh, Pastor Nelson, I was a bit worried when I met him, but I ran to him, you know, and uh, he hugged me and he said, he turned to um, another pastor he was with and he said, this one is my child. This one is my daughter. And you're a pastor now, aren't you? And I said, yes, I'm a pastor. And he said, and we are so proud of you. We love you so much and we pray for you, you know. So they might find it hard to say, you know, I release you. I let you go there hoping that you can still stay, okay. Um, so, and then, of course, there's the other one. Like recently we had a case and I know she also doesn't mind me sharing as long as I don't share. There's, you know, I'd been telling my flock, guys, you need to go back to the places where you were for release. And this lady decided to go to um, an altar that is, has actually been defiled. The Lord has told me they were never even walking with God in the first place. This lady came to us when she was a total, total mess. And unfortunately, when she went back, when she came back to see me, she looked so different and asked her, what's wrong, honey? What's wrong? What has happened to you? She said, you know, you preached about release and um, I went to my pastor and he wouldn't release me and he started asking me these questions and he started asking me these things and I could see it in her eyes she'd gone back to that thing that had trapped her that had pulled her back you know she came to us with depression she came back to us with low zero 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 self-esteem and it was showing on her face and all that and she's looking gorgeous now the Lord has worked on her he hasn't finished the work that he's doing on her the full manifestation of what God is doing is not done but this man of God decided he was going to manipulate her and use her and start telling her really 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 you know, and I had to pray over her. And, you know, there's a prayer that we pray for sliming. You know, in Sozo, we have a sliming situation. We have a position where you're, a, you're a, a, a prisoner. And then there's a situation where you are a captive. And in a captive situation, uh, this is from uh, uh, um, Isaiah 61 that differentiates between uh, a captive and, and a prisoner. Go and read it. Verse 1, I think it is. The Spirit of the Lord God. It could be verse 2. could be verse 2. Talks about a prisoner, talks about a captive. So when you're a captive, it's like you've been slain. You know, we call it being slain in Sozo. In a situation where, uh, you know, something has been thrown at you, okay? And and so as a result, you're, you're struggling, you're, you're feeling like you're going backwards and everything. You're feeling a bit discouraged, maybe even a bit of, you know, whatever it is of the old. But by laying hands on you and just declaring the blood of Jesus over you, by anointing oil and by saying no 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 and disconnecting you to that altar then quickly you go back so within like you know the next day i had to call her again and say honey are you okay are you okay sweetie are you okay and just affirm her and speak back the word of god because you know unfortunately you know the thing is a spiritual authority by this is a very powerful person and sadly a lot of people are using it to manipulate a lot of people are using to 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 to, to become gods in people's lives a lot of people are using it to control the flock and especially the prophetic it's really being used to hurt the flock as opposed to the, for the greater good of the church and so um you know, uh, I, pro I by the apostolic authority, I began to just disconnect her. And the next day when I called her, she was feeling better. And I just loved on her. You know, so what had happened to this dear lady was when she went to this uh, man of God, and the man of God knows her well, and so began to speak certain things. As an apostle, I'm able to tell that was manipulation. That was witchcraft. But what happened to her? She wasn't able to speak. She wasn't able to say, this is what God has done. I told her the next time I interact with him, please tell him what God has done. Because you overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, by the the word of your testimony. So when you go for a release and um, the man or God, the woman or God tries to take you back to where you are, tries to tell you that, you know, you need maybe another deliverance session or several deliverance sessions, or you need to do this and that and the other, or this is, this is going to happen to you. Speak the testimony of God. Say what God has done for you. Speak of the glory of God. And then the other thing I encourage people, if you're in Nairobi, you know, or wherever you are, just go for one ministry, you know, go for the, like a weekday ministry, go, go for a chat session here and there. One thing I found, like even for myself, it's, I've tried praying about a church where to fellowship when I'm at home, it wasn't working. 
But when I step into the place, the Lord shows me whether that's the place or not. So sometimes it will take you visiting the place. Sometimes it will take you going there and saying, Lord, when I go there, reveal to me whether this is it. And very often what happens when you go to a place where the Lord wants you to be, it will be like home. It may be that the Lord may even give a word that is so direct to what you've been trusting God for. But then again, be careful about diviners. So guys, we don't encourage church hopping. We encourage you to get into a church and be plugged in. We encourage you to grow with a church. We encourage you to, to, to you know, minister in a church and grow and, and work with the man of God, grow, grow with the woman of God, but they have to be following Jesus Christ. And you need also to be utilized so that you can also grow by growing others. Amen. Shalom. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. But let's follow the right procedure. Please do not text a man of God or woman of God and tell them, I've left. Let me tell you, curses will follow you. Even if the man of God or woman of God is maybe not walking fully with God, there's a way that the laws of God work. So some things will not work. Some things will not work. If you struggle to go and see the man of God or the woman of God, maybe you are in a cell group. You can go and see the cell group leader. Maybe you are in a worship team. Maybe you are in this other ministry. You can go and see the ministry leader and then ask them to be the ones to help you to communicate that information. It's still honor. It's still a place of honor. Amen. I really don't want me to go. I have to go, honey. What is it? You don't want me to go. What is it, sweetie? What is it? What is it? Oh, <laughs> I'm done. I have to go and minister. We are doing a Mizizi course. <clears throat> By the way, I'm thinking soon online I will do Mizizi. Mizizi is a beautiful, beautiful book. Beautiful book by Pastor Moravi, Pastor M. And um, we've been using it. We said, why replicate? Why try and get something else? So uh, I've been using it as a basic, and he hasn't stopped us from using it. He hasn't stopped other churches from using it, thank God. Uh, but I'm planning to do a, an online mezizi for those who are far, okay? So an online mezizi for those who are far. So if you're out of the country or somewhere else and all that. But then you see for mezizi, you need to read. Eh? So we'll need to organize for you to get a book um, so that you can be able to read it and, and, and walk so we can walk together. Um, Oh, yeah. So it's one of the things I've, that I've been thinking about. How do we do a Mizizi session for those who are outside the country and, um, and teach them and all that? If you're in the States, please let me know if you'd like to do Mizizi online um, so that as I visit you, um, uh, maybe you're in Australia as well, maybe you're in Singapore. I'm going to those places uh, pretty soon. Uh, maybe you're in Israel. I'll be going to Israel next month. So if you're in those places and you need a Mizizi book, let me know. I'll organize to go and buy it for you. Just let me know so that I can organize to go and buy it for you. I'll carry them. I'll carry them, I'll bring them to you, give them to you so that then we can then begin to schedule our class. We may have to find another place for us to do it other than just here online, I don't know. I'm really avoiding shepherding other people's flocks. Yeah, first of all, it's extremely discouraging by the way. Yeah? It is not funny to shepherd people's flocks. Um, then it's just not even biblical and then of course, you know, it doesn't even work and all that. If you're in Nairobi, you need to come. You need to come. <laughs> Amen. Unless you're being new somewhere and the Lord is using you to minister. Yeah, so just let me know. Maggie, remind me, eh? Okay. Maggie, just remind me to carry for you a book. Okay. All right. Um, yes, Alma. Mizizi has grown many people. Uh, Julia, which part of Europe, darling? Which part of Europe? Uh, I have a visa going on for UK. So that's as far as I'm going in Europe right now. Um... The thing with Mizizi depends on how it's taught. Eh? You can attend Mizizi from beginning to end and never get saved. Sad, eh? Yeah. So it's life transforming. God, I hope you can't hear my children. Let me tell you, there's really, really shouting. Eh? Mm. Yes. Shilatoya, the grace to be obedient. Eh? To follow the cloud always. I love that. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. Mombasa, I'm very willing to come to you and do Mizizi in Mombasa because I've the Lord has spoken about Mombasa. Julia, Switzerland. Oi, 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 oi. Gladwell, I don't know. I doubt that it's on, on, on Amazon, but I don't know. Um, you can look for it. It's called Mizizi. M-I-Z-I-Z-I. -Z -I -Z -I. Mizizi as in roots, yeah? All right. So, Lea, Wagikuyo, Seattle. So, I guess I should come with a few books to the States, right? I guess, yeah, okay, so I will organize. You do have to pay for your own book, yeah? I may buy it, and then I will bring it to you, and then you have to pay for your own book, yeah? So it's one of the things you need to, to do. Of course, if people don't have money, we always buy for them. 
you know what, Livy, if you organize for us a meeting in the Netherlands and, you know, that, that general area, and there's a fellowship of people who are willing to meet, we'll come. We'll come. Oh, Alma, there's a Mavuno church in the States, and they began Mizizi there. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Oh, they call it rooted. Oh, yeah, because you can't say me, say, say. They probably can't even say it. That's wonderful. Okay, that's great. That's great to know. Okay. Sasawa, I know they are doing it also in Addis as well. Yeah, but, you know, let's grow. Let's go together. So one book that I'm working with is Mizizi quite a bit right now because I'm finding out that there's a lot of gaps in Christianity. There's a lot of people who don't know basics. And then the other book I want to do is The Purpose-Driven Life because a lot of people don't understand about their, their lives. So we've got a class going here in Nairobi um, on Wednesdays. We are in week six, so we've got uh, uh, four weeks to go, and then I'll start another one. So if you want to do Mizizi with us, you can let us know even if you fellowship in another church. That I will do. That I will do and we'll grow together. Amen. God bless you so much. I love you too, honey. I love you. Pray for us. Stand with us. Amen. God bless you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Let me now go and take care of those that the Lord has given me and work with my ministry team. Very, very precious. Can you imagine we have like 25 ministry team members? I can't believe it. Guys, you know, God works in such amazing ways. Last year, around this time, so, so oh, power failure. Last year, around this time, we worked with about how many people? Um, the entire church was pretty much just about... Um, we want more than 30. Now we are about 140. But the interesting thing is that 24 of those are in ministry. As in about the size of the church last year actually is in ministry right now. Can you imagine that is growth? That is growth. When you read Acts, Acts 3 and it says they met house to house and the Lord added to them those who are continuously being saved. That is God. We're seeing phenomenal growth. We love the Lord. We thank God. We now have six cell groups. If you'd like to be a part of our cell groups, let us know. We have six cell, cell groups, uh, soon to be seven, and we bless the Lord for what he's doing. Amen. By the way, we have a marriage enrichment group in Sozo Church. We believe in working together as couples, being accountable to one another you'll be amazed at how much it can save your marriage and how much it can grow your marriage when another man looks and says hello what are you doing or the men pull aside your husband and go and have dinner with him and tell him dude it's not in order it's not in order yeah or the women pull together your wife and pull her side and say it's not in order it's amazing it's a model of christ and it's really working god bless you we love you from Nairobi, Kenya. This is Apostle Kathy Kageni Oganga. Please share um, the whatever the clip. Please share and keep calling on one another. Amen. Aman Junge, yes, we have a cell group in Embakasi. We do. We do. So talk to me. We will plug you in. Okay? We have a cell group in Embakasi. Nyayo Embakasi, particularly, there's a cell group. Amen. God bless you guys. We love you. We love you and God's doing an amazing thing. Amen. God's doing an... But then let me tell you, all glory to God. You know... Growing church, one thing I do is, like I've told you, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So I go back to the owner of the church and I say, ah, this is your church. You call me, you know, what do I do? Where do I go? Where do I move? And the Lord moves in that way. Amen. And we've seen him be faithful and be a father to us. And it's his church. We are just workers. You know, we are just KYMs in this vineyard. And it's such a privilege to work for him. Amen. And what I want to, I've been saying to the Lord is, I want the Sozo model to work so hard that those who come to us, we go back to them and tell them, we just use the old time religion. These new things are not working. They will work short term, but in the long term, when the sheep are truly fed, when you truly love one another, when you're not focused on money, when you want to, 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 to transform the society and when you want Jesus to be seen and the glory of God to be seen. It works. It works. It works. Amen. Shalom. God bless you guys. Amen. Amen.